Welcome to Gotchas in 30. I'm your host, Taja Davis. And for the next 30 minutes, we'll take a look into the people and stories of UCSB athletics. Bill Womble, the original Gaucho heart, is known and loved by many in the UCSB community. Overcoming many obstacles in his life and remaining dedicated to UCSB athletics, Bill Womble is an inspiration to all Gauchos. Phil Womble is kind of the thread that has held many generations of UCSB athletics together. Um, I think he represents everything that is a gaucho. He is incredibly inspirational. Uh, he's had to do a lot to overcome. He's been stricken with cerebral palsy since birth. No matter what obstacles he's faced, he's been able to overcome them, regardless of his physical restrictions. And I think he's kind of the guy who just never quits. He's 75 years old, and he was expected to live a fraction of that. But he's been with the department for so many years and just been really the heart and soul behind what we do here. Phil Womble Hall of Champions is an incredible historical resource for this department. Um, it's something that we did not have until we had this the Intercollegiate Athletics Building. We had an anonymous donor come forward who um, gave us money based on us dedicating it in, in Phil's name. Uh, all of us wanted to have some place that could kind of reflect what we thought were the true values and honor the, the great tradition that we had here, uh, particularly in our great new building. And of course, we were all very interested in having it named after the correct gaucho. I think that there, it had to be named after Phil. There was no other, there was nobody else it could have been named for. My dad was in the Navy, and when I was growing up, he taught me Phil always reminds me we need to do it the right way. Gauchos don't just compete and we don't just excel, but we do it the right way. We've always been kind of underdogs, and uh, we've always said, to heck with that. Let's just go out and, and beat whoever we need to beat, compete with whoever we need to compete. We don't have a lot of money. We don't have a lot of resources, but we have such a strong program in spite of the excuses that we, we could use, and I think that's, that's what Phil is all about. He could have every excuse in the book to to you know, never leave his house or to never have lived the life that he's lived. He could have given up a long time ago and you know, gauchos never give up. Phil is kind of that guy who just has, has really driven himself to overcome. And I think UCSB athletes by and large do the same thing. And he is, uh, he is incredibly representative of that spirit. I'm Hi, I'm Sam Brown. I'm a shooting guard for UCSB men's basketball. I'm from Gillette, Wyoming. A long ways away from here. Uh, small town, uh, about 40,000 people. I grew up there my whole life. Um, it's, a, it's a lot different out there. I mean, it's, well, I would say there's a lot more humble people out there, a lot more down to earth people out there, but I mean, there's, it has a lot of diversity and stuff too. One thing I really miss uh, back home in Wyoming, I did a lot of fishing, a lot of camping, and things in the outdoors. I, I started basketball, I mean, before I was five. I um, got on a traveling team at a young age. We weren't fortunate enough to have AIU teams out in Wyoming because the population is too low. So um, I just got to be on like a traveling team with my friends and we would travel around to different states around um, Wyoming, South Dakota, that area, and just to kind of get our names out that way. My dream was always to play Division I basketball, but it was just so hard coming from a place like that. So I mean, I was just in the gym 
day by day at the rec center, just seven in the morning, nine o'clock at night, you know, just all the way through. Just I'd go grab some lunch and come back and just put in more work. I was the only Division I player to come out of my high school. Um, there's not a lot of coaches that look at small schools like that, so that was very tough for me. Um, I always idolize Kevin Durant, that's why I'm number 35. I picked that uh, my ninth grade year. The only other player to come out of Wyoming to make it to Division I and to the NBA was James Johnson, and I'm looking to be the next. Um, he put, went to play Wake Forest and then went to play in Toronto. My parents mean the, the world to me. Um, I wouldn't be here where I am right now, even in the second right now without them. I mean, they sent me to multiple um, basketball tournaments all over the country to get my name out there and supported me the whole way. Um, I was, it was a kind of a cool thing. Uh, Coach Williams came out to my house and did an in-home visit uh, for me before I committed here at UCSB. And uh, we brought him out to the coal mine where my dad works and uh, showed him around. It was, I mean, it was a whole new experience for him, so it was kind of cool. And uh, just there having him in my house and just showing that he really cares and meant a lot to me. And that made it, that showed a huge impact on my choice and why I came here. Going to school here, we get to travel to uh, many different places. And uh, Coach promised me when I signed here that we could do a trip out to Wyoming. And uh, we did that trip last year, and it was just a phenomenal trip. I mean, I had so much support from all the state there and all my family. I mean, the place was just a sold out place. And uh, it was just great vibes and a good feeling to know that I still have that support, even though I'm still so far away from home and I have all these people that still care for me. Being on this team here at UCSB has been a very good thing for me just for the fact that we have so much support throughout the players. We all connect very well. Our coaches are always there for us anytime we need any help with anything. I have wonderful living scholar parents, uh, Brian Escalera and Jan Escalera, and they're there just in the, a second if I need any, anything from them. And uh, just being so far away from home, it's nice to have that second family here. It's just really nice to know that I have someone around when I need a helping hand. Nicole is magic with The Rock. One minute you see her, the next you don't. Big Al is a magician on the boards. One minute you see the ball, the next you don't. Experience the magic of gaucho basketball. Get your tickets at ucsbgauchos.com or call 805-893-UCSB. There's magic in the air. Don't let your seats disappear. The women's tennis team is being coached by Montreal native Simone Thibodeau. Let's check out his experience and what he has in store for the team this year. Good girl. Nice. Boy, come on, come on. Feel it. It's all about starting close to the impact. Yes! Yes! I'm winning! Oh, bravo! <laughs> Hi, I'm Simon Thibodeau, the new women's tennis coach here at UCSB. I'm from Montreal, which is a bit more uh, a French part of Canada, so it's a little bit more European, so Santa Barbara reminds me a little bit more of that because of the culture. Different weather, obviously. But uh, yeah, no, very good quality of people. I was national coach of Canada for five years, working with the best juniors. So I got to travel all around the world, met a lot of coaches, young players. And it never occurred to me to be a, a college coach until I, I was at the US Open one year and everybody was recruiting some of my players. And actually they recruited me as an assistant coach instead of my player. And uh, that's how I started at University of Arizona as an assistant. Let's move our feet to it deeper every time to have good impact and use your legs. I'm pretty dynamic, I would say. I don't scream after the team, but I'm pretty intense. I ask, I'm very demanding in terms of attitude and effort, and I like them to be coachable. Uh, but also they can always come talk to me in the office and I'm very human and I like to treat them like adults. This? No. This? I have a daughter who's almost nine years old, name is Camelia, which I say I am I miss her a lot. Uh, so during school year, I uh, don't see her much, but we Skype uh, almost a couple of times a week and we talk on the phone. 
We have one time during the week that I have to Skype before she goes to bed and with the difference of time I have to leave uh, one time a week, practice a little earlier, but luckily I have my assistant Carling that can uh, take over the team when I'm gone. <laughs> I like it. Ready? <laughs> That's Kiki. Nice. Oh! <laughs> nice. Getting better. The goal is to win the Big West Conference. I think we can achieve that this year. Uh, we have a young team. Uh, they're all improving so, so far. And uh, just look forward to start the competition. But winning the Big West, making it to the NCAA would be a good goal for this year. Everyone in California wants to come to UCSB. The location is great. Uh, now we just need a great tennis team. And we already have uh, great girls that want to improve. So it starts really well here this year. Good job, you. My name is Evan Light, I'm a senior and I'm an opposite for UCSB men's volleyball. I am Chad Kinji, I'm on the UCSB men's volleyball team and I am the libero. Our team has a lot of depth, uh, we added some transfers that are really going to help us out and I think uh, we really serve the ball well and pass the ball well and those are, those are two pretty basic fundamental skills that if you want to win you have to do well. We are returning four of the seven starters from last year, me, Evan Light, Austin Kinji, and Jake Stahl. We got a transfer named Matt Hanley from UCLA, as well as another transfer from UCSD, Vaughn Lennon, who actually really helped the practice squad. And Matt Hanley will probably be an impact player this year, which is nice. He brings a little more seniority to our squad. Jonas Safe, our freshman setter from last year, he's now a year older, which is really nice. He's a little more in tune with everyone on our team, knows how to handle everyone a little better and I think he'll be able to run our offense a lot better this year. There's no one impact player you can focus on, and we've got a lot of people on our team who are very offensively minded, so everyone on our team can put the ball away. No matter if it's Jonah, having Jonah as 6'7 is very nice. And then we have two, two outsides that are gonna be really good for our team, and our middles are very powerful too. Ever since the uh, finals run we had in 2011, we've kind of been rebuilding for the last three years. So I think this is a year where we can really showcase uh, all the work we put in. Pretty much this year we got a lot, lot more celebration. Every point we celebrate, which is it's really nice to see. Last year I think we might have lacked a little of on the fire side. This year my role is pretty much to lead the team and uh, you know I, I've, I was on the squad that went to the finals. I know what it takes to get there. There's only a handful of guys that, are, that were on that team that are still here. So it's just kind of understanding how long the season is, staying healthy and uh, keeping everyone in good spirits the whole season. Last year, kind of, I got in my own head, but this year I tend to bring a little more fire, a little more communication with all my passers, and just make sure everyone's on the right page. Now the MPSF, you got to show up every night ready to play, and uh, Rick does a great job of preparing us week in and week out with scouting reports, but it's a grind, and that's why we need depth. We need guys that are going to be ready to come into matches when someone's having an off night, because Unlike the other leagues, you got to be ready to play every night or else you're going you're gonna to lose. I would definitely say we're a top five team this year. We're very well rounded. All these guys have played together for a year already, if not two. So we know the teams that we're going to face. We know the players. We know we can beat them. We proved it last year. We beat pretty much everyone we played at least once. So it's just going to be a matter of going out there and uh, being ready to play every night. Get the pass off the net and slow their tempo, and we did that. We 
we passed the ball pretty well, but we served the ball really, really well. And, uh, you know, they didn't have a great serving match, but we did. So even though we missed a few serves, we were back there ripping them, so that's what counted. Today, UC's B student athletes are coming together at Isla Vista School for Read Across America Day. As a part of the Gauchos Give program, UCSB Athletics wanted to take a quick look at this special service event. We're here today to read to the elementary school students for Dr. Seuss's birthday, which was yesterday, March 2nd. I'm excited to be here and read to the kids, and uh, it should be a fun time. Reading to the Kids is a great event for the Gaucho Gibbs program. I'm excited to be here. It's my first time reading to the kids. What was the Lawrence? And why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? Hi, I'm Woody Woodward from the baseball team. Today we're at Gaucho's Back, it's a student athlete orientation. We've got breakfast lined up for us, let's go get some food. Yeah. Gotta keep it healthy. We got, we got some camera time for you right here. Oh, okay, awesome. Here's the rest of the baseball team rolling in as one cohesive unit. Okay, so the whole baseball team cruising in right yeah, now? Yeah, we're rolling together. Rolling deep, rolling in numbers, that's how it always is. Wave the camera, guys. No, 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 you're saying hi to the camera. Say hi, camera. Let's find, the goal is to find everyone blue. Justin, you blue? I think we have a lot of camera shy people. Oh, yes. Study. Academics. That's actually really good. I've made like four of those mistakes. I didn't even know there was a writing test and I like showed up the day of. I didn't have 36 units going in in my second year. I didn't know you had to take one, writing one or two. So this is definitely really good for the freshmen and everyone else because they, I had to learn from my mistakes the hard way. They can, they actually had someone to tell them. I should wave to the camera over there. Say, hey camera. These are freshmen, they're nervous. Last one of the day. Have you ever been pulled over by a cop? No. <laughs> no, mom, I have not. <laughs> but seriously, no. Yeah, I think you switch and then you keep doing it, right? Hi, Woody. Nice to meet you. Um, what's your favorite candy? Candy? Skittles. Uh, as a child, what was your life dream? Um, to be on Broadway. Broadway? Yeah. How's that going? Not very well. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite food? I think we're good. I think we're good on the questions. <laughs> I think it's stuck. Definitely worth it, definitely worth it. <laughs> 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 
Scott, I'm gonna cheer you on now. I'm gonna cheer you on now. All right, well, that's gonna do it for Gaucho's back. Uh, we got lunch planned for us now. The coach is gonna be serving us now. So uh, glad you can join us for uh, our student athlete orientation. I hope to see you out there at our games and uh, supporting the Gauchos. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just plop it right there. Okay. Thank you very much. For years, the University of California has been able to provide Californians with an affordable, world-class education. Last year, UC gave out more grants and scholarships than ever before. But even with that financial help, most students still need loans, part-time jobs, or both to pay for their education. Let's make a promise to change that. It begins now with the Promise for Education, a new kind of crowdfunding platform. Here's how it works. You make a promise. I promise. I got a promise. Bungee jump. Ah! I kind of have two that I've been throwing around. I will work at a soup kitchen for 2,000 hours. I'm a rep as President Obama, if there's any indication. After you made a promise, set a goal. It can be. $10. It could be $100, $1,000, a $1 million. And you share it on Facebook or Twitter. Or what I use, Pimpstagram. You share it with your mom or your dad or your friends and you rally your friends. And their friends and their friends' friends. To contribute money towards your goal. And remember, every little bit makes a difference. At the end of the program, all the contributions made will be used to create more UC scholarships. That's good news. We need everyone to participate. Students, Californians, Americans. Alumni, teachers, anyone who cares about education to make this a success. Help change the future by supporting scholarships for students in need. A lot of students like myself. Like us, first generation. Start by making a promise. Make a promise for education. What will you promise? Hmm? Look, we got to be tough right here. Don't change who we are. It's a three-point game. It starts with the defensive end. This next two and a half minutes is huge. Set the tone defensively. So I need a big-time effort with ball pressure, with aggressiveness. Let's get some deflections and an easy hoop, and everybody's got a rebound. Everybody, let's go together. One, two, three. <laughs> I'm Janessa Jepson. I'm a junior infielder on the softball team. I've been playing softball since I was five years old, and um, I have such vivid memories of going out to the field with my dad and playing catch and um, standing on the wrong side of the bag and having my coach have to move me, running the bases backwards. My teammates always joke with me about my, my level of pain tolerance that I have because the morning before I ended up going to the hospital, I ran stadiums with the team and then a few hours later decided to go see a doctor. I ended up being diagnosed with a severe kidney infection. I had a white blood cell count of 48,000 and um, was admitted into the ICU and I was there for a week and ended up going into septic shock, which is where your, the fluid that they're giving you to help like level all your vital signs um, goes into your lungs and your heart and it caused me to get pneumonia, so I was there for an extra few more days. But I think the thing that helped me the most is my teammates came and visited me every day. Um, it was nice to always get messages from my coach, and um, I just felt more like I was part of a family. Because when you're down here, it's your home away from home, and they really are your family. You spend every day with them. Because I had to take medical leave last winter, um, I am a quarter behind in school. So I'm trying to take extra classes and take summer school classes to try to catch up. But I'm really determined to make this next quarter my best quarter academically. I'm really grateful for all the support that I've received over the past year with my family, my friends, and my teammates. Now that I'm back, I feel stronger than ever, healthier than ever, and I'm really excited to take on the season with my team.
everyone, I'm Taja Davis from UCSB Athletics, and tonight is the annual dinner to celebrate this year's Living Scholars here at the Montecito Biltmore Four Seasons Hotel. Through the Gaucho Fund, the Living Scholars program produces a priceless connection between student athletes and their donors. Let's take a look to see what the night has in store for our Gauchos. I think this is a happy evening for our celebration. I want to thank every Living Scholars for your generous support. Giving up the money to support them, you also support them spiritually like a family. That bonding is just fantastic. One of the biggest, uh, biggest reward of working at the UC Santa Barbara is to watch the Gaucho game. Some, somebody asked me, uh, how long have you been here? I have been here, and Don Burstein knows about it. I came here with Don Burstein 20 years ago. So that was the year you were born. <laughs> this, is, this is a family, and I want to thank each and every one of our coaches. You worked so hard, and you lead our team. You are the example model of the cultural spirit to our students. Also, I want to thank our students. You are the uh, exemplary model for our students. You do everything, and you, you know how that is. To excel academically and also to excel in athletics. Looking for the best in gaucho gear? Look no further than shopucsbgauchos.com. UCSB Athletics is pleased to announce the debut of our new online store, shopucsbgauchos.com. Gaucho fans can now find thousands of items to choose from. It is the biggest assortment of gaucho gear ever assembled under one roof. With a full line of women's and youth apparel, performance gear, sweatshirts, tees, and headwear, shop UCSBGauchos.com has something for everybody. Grab yourself or someone you love something new from the gaucho shop at shop UCSBGauchos.com today. Well, that's all for Gauchos in 30. Be sure to visit shop UCSBGauchos.com for all of your gaucho gear needs, as well as visit our main website, UCSBGauchos.com, for more videos like these and for a way to buy tickets online. For UCSB Athletics, I'm Taja Davis. See you next time.